Welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy Show, a Baxter Professional Services production. Welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy Show. I'm Tina Baxter, your host. We we're experts in nursing and experts in business. Today's guest is Dominique Carey. She is a nurse practitioner and the owner of Rejuvenate Muncie Wellness and Aesthetics. She has a medical wellness clinic which offers IV hydration, weight loss, replacement supplements, women's health, men's health, CPR, and first aid. Welcome to the show, Dominique Carey. Hi, and welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy show where we are experts in nursing and experts in business. I'm Tina Baxter and I'm your host. And today we have Dr. Dominice Carey. She is our resident expert. She's been a family nurse practitioner over five years with a doctorate in nursing practice and the owner of Rejuvenate Muncie LLC, which is a medical wellness and aesthetic clinic. And she's also the host of Medical Melanin Podcast. Welcome to the show, Dr. Carey. Hi, thank you for having me. Very excited to be here. Thank you. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, Yeah, so uh, you said I'm a family nurse practitioner. I have been since 2018. Um, Prior to that, I was a registered nurse since 2015, I believe. Um, And so I have worked in acute care, long-term care, home health care, pretty much most areas except for hospice primarily. Um, And then I had uh, my family nurse practitioner degree. So I worked primary care, did some home care with that also. um, And then kind of on a whim decided to go back and get my doctorate. I said I was done after um, my master's, but I was like, why not? Let's just do it. And so um, I got my doctorate in 2021 in nursing practice. And so here I am now. Um, Currently I, I'm the owner of Rejuvenate Muncie, so I have um, that medical practice here in Muncie. I do um, a few different service lines, weight loss, hormone therapy, IV hydration, um, some Botox and chemical pills now. Um, But I also teach, and so I teach at Ball State University um, in their undergrad and graduate nursing programs. Wonderful. So very, very well-rounded, and we'll unpack some of that in a moment. But the first question I always usually like to ask after the introduction is what made you decide to become a nurse? Yeah, so there's really two things to that. Um, my When I was going to college, I was like, I want to be an OBGYN. That was what I wanted to do. Um, and so I started at Ball State and I was meeting with my account, my advisor and she's like, I wanted to do nursing. And pre-med because my grandma is a nurse. And so I have nursing experience um, and I've been introduced to that. So I'm like, I want to do medicine basically. Um, But when I was trying to do both of those things, she's like, well, those tracks really don't line up, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I said, okay, well, we'll just forget the pre-med track. I'll just do nursing. Um, And I just really have enjoyed it since then. And I decided somewhere along the line to just ditch the whole um, physician route and just stick with nursing. So curious, though, um, you became a family nurse practitioner and not a midwife, even though you wanted to be a, uh, an OB. So how, how did that decision come out? Um, I've actually never touched OB in any way, shape or form. <laughs> I I was in nursing school and I was like, I mean, I wanted to do that, but I actually had my daughter in nursing school and I was working as a um, student nurse tech at Ball. So I, And I worked nights at that point and I just switched to days and I could not go back to nights. And so coming out of nursing school, most of the labor and delivery, um, neonatal jobs are night shift and I just could not stay awake. I could not do it anymore. <laughs> so um, I just never really got to go over there. And then sometime towards the end of my RN degree, I just, I still knew I wanted to do higher level practice, um, but I was just, I didn't want to go the physician route. It's so long and so much more debt. Uh, So I was like, well, I can still do that in some capacity as a nurse practitioner. And so that's kind of how I veered off into that. As a person who's not OB herself, my specialty is geriatrics. I did, however, spend time in the OB arena with my cousin, who's a wonderful OBGYN. OBGYN in Arkansas. And it was that experience. No offense, love you cuz, but... I knew I did not have the patience for that. (laughs) I don't like being uh, awakened in the middle of the night to go to the hospital 
and find out you have Braxton Hicks and there's no baby coming. I I was really mad. And I learned from that two week experience with him. Yeah, this is not for me. And I think that was what sealed it for me. Medicine as we know it, uh, being a physician was not for me because I have wonderful doctors in my family and they never had time to have any fun. They could buy all the toys, but never play with them. And I thought, I don't really want that life. I, I want choices. Um, and so I found nursing in my first day in nursing school. I was like, I found my tribe <laughs> and I haven't looked back since. So I, I think, I think for all of us, it's something that draws us to nursing. If this is the career for you, you know it. Absolutely. You know. I remember, I remember, um, I worked inpatient at St. Vincent and Anderson and Ascension, St. John, whatever people know it as now, but I remember like yes. the lead medical hospital hospitalist, he had several kids and I mean, he was like in his 50, late 50s, but he was working all the time. I'm like, what is the point of this when you're just, you know, paying off debts all the time and you're working? I'm like, there's no, there's no relief. There is no happy ending that I see with him. So I'm glad I did not go that route. And the way medicine is now, um, oops, I think we lost your camera. So sorry. I don't know what happened. I got a call and I'm on do not disturb. So I, I don't know what happened. Okay. <laughs> I was, was going to say with medicine now, um, all the private practices are being bought up by hospital conglomerations. And so Doing we're it seeing again. a lot of <laughs> uh, exodus. So. Absolutely. I'm sorry. That's my dad calling me in FaceTime. I guess FaceTime can jump through Do Not Disturb. I don't know. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, no, no. So sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. This is why, <laughs> hey, we're raw and unedited here. So it is what it is, right? <laughs> this is life. Yes, this is go right ahead. Of an entrepreneur and a nurse practitioner. Yep. This is what happens. So, totally understandable. Okay, so tell me what made you decide to um, transition in your nursing career? Because you said you worked in med surge and everywhere else. So kind of walk us through some of your nursing background and your nursing journey. Yeah, so um, towards the end of my RN program, I was working in the hospital as a tech. Um, and so I was on a medical telemetry unit. Um, and I didn't really see a job there that I wanted at the time, and that position just kind of ended. So I actually ended up in long-term care before I took my NCLEX. Um, and so I was working there as a CNA, um, and, and that was my first um, RN role, and I knew I did not want to do that long-term. I will say long-term care is so backbreaking work. I mean, it is, it is so heavy on you. I would be in bed by five o'clock and coming off a of day shift. I get up at three and I'm like, pick my kid up, get home. And I'm laying down. I'm like, I was wearing like, um, not Ted hose, but compression socks. I was just, I was so tore up. So I knew I didn't want to do that long term. And I just saw this job posting for um, a home health care supervisor. And so a couple of months after I passed my boards, I got that role. Um, and it was great. It is a different environment. It's a lot more stress, not because of really the patient level, but um, more on the admin side. So with hiring and staffing and that population of staffing is just so fluid. It's always changing. Um, and I would have kept doing that, but I had already started my nurse practitioner um, tract at, at that time. And so I could get all my prereqs done, but I needed to be able to work less days. I couldn't work Monday through Friday um, and do clinicals and really focus on the heavy load of that program. So I decided to go inpatient a little late into most people's game at that point. Um, but I went inpatient in 2017 and that was on a medical telemetry unit uh, that I was kind of familiar with from being a, um, a tech, but this was in Anderson. Um, and I worked there all throughout my program. So, I mean, I know people have some concerns, like you didn't do that before, really before you were a nurse practitioner. I feel like I got great experience um, while I was there. I feel like I catch on to things really quickly. So they actually did a 12 week orientation, but I really didn't need the full 12, even though I had never done that type of work. Um, but it was great experience. It's very good for like all of your skill sets, which is why I'm glad to do clinicals now, because I can keep some of those fresh. 
Um, and so I, but I did that for about two years and I had my son um, at the end of 2018. And so that was kind of right after I had uh, passed my boards for a nurse practitioner. And so I just didn't go back after I had him because I was looking for an MP job at that time. Okay. So what was your first MP job? My first job was in primary care. I um, had a kind of different role. I worked at an employer-owned clinic. So all of those patients were either the employee or a spouse or a dependent on the insurance plan. And so um, billing was not something I really had to worry about. We did fee sheets, but we didn't really have to worry about if they were exactly correct because no one was really billing. Um, and other than that, it was you know full primary care. We did some acute things, some occupational because we were on site at one of the clinics. I worked in two and one of them was on site. Um, so we would do that. Um, I saw um, people for DOT physicals. Um, we did a drug screens there. Um, and that was my main role really up until I opened my clinic. Um, in addition to that, I had done some home care, kind of home care, those um, home Medicare assessments, basically. Mm -hmm. I had done some of those, which I just really can't do home care anymore. It just makes me so nervous. I had a really kind of strange experience at at the last place I went to and I was like, I'm done with this. Um, and so um, that was pretty much what I did until I opened my clinic was that primary care role. So are you full time in your clinic now? I am not. Technically, my clinic is part time. Um, I, for the most part, I typically work two days a week. Uh, since I teach, I will be off this summer, so I'm going to be in there more. Um, but I pretty much work two days a week. However, I um always communicate with my patients. So I'm pretty much always communicating any day of the week, even if we're not open. Um, the clinic is actually open three days a week. And my grandma, I pulled her out of retirement and she's my nurse. <laughs> and so she is there one day by herself um, and she only does injections. And then um, I'm there the other two days with her and hopefully opening a fourth day because we're kind of getting busy. So kind of have that need for another day now. So what made you uh, decide to become an entrepreneur? I mean, I mean, I understand you've got a career in academia, um, you worked in primary care, but what made you decide to take that leap and become an entrepreneur? So I have had people talk to me about kind of doing my own thing. Actually, as soon as I became a nurse, you were like, oh, you should do your own thing. And I'm like, no, no, I've always wanted to just, I always say I want to be a peon. I just want to go to work and clock out and go home. But um, I, in 20, what year is this? 2023. In 2021, I started um, a weight loss journey and I was seeing a doctor, a physician out of Carmel Telehealth, um, and he was prescribing a medicine for me. Um, and so after about like three or four months, my aunt is also a nurse practitioner and she said, hey, I think I'm going to start a clinic. I want to do weight loss and um, IV stuff. And I was like, oh, that's, that's basically what the guy I see now, he does that. Um, and because she was doing it, I felt a lot more comfortable than I had had in the past, knowing that even though we're not together, I had someone I could like talk to and I'm not completely alone. And so really in December of 2021, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and by January of 2022, I really had it all, you know, kind of set and ready to go. And so I just was like, I'm just going to try it. And she started and I started a couple months after her and it's just been all uphill <laughs> since then. Great. That's wonderful. And, and it's good that you had someone to work with you, not necessarily in the same practice, but um, a bu kind of like a buddy system where someone you can bounce ideas off of. And she was a little bit of a trailblazer for you because she started a little bit for you, but you could actually learn and support one another. And that power of community is so important. How has that um, helped you um, in the community, because I know you're in the Muncie area, and I see you at events in Muncie. Um, and how does that, being in a community like that and attending those networking events, how has that impacted your business? I think it's been it's been so amazing. I was kind of afraid. Um, you know, I, I'm very opinionated about some things, and I have been for years, and so I'm like, oh, there's going to be people that don't like me or whatever. But honestly, um, it has been great. I have had so much support, um, and I've been trying to reciprocate that support in as many ways as I can. Um, but pretty much anytime I do an event, I feel like I have a huge influx of people just 
people still haven't heard about my clinic yet. And so um, it's just great. And I have so many people who are always sharing that information, even if they don't come from come to me for anything. Um, and so this community has been really great. I think a lot of times people see Muncie as smaller and like, why would you take a risk there? But there's so much value in this community and you know the needs that I saw were needs I had for myself and I was having to go basically see someone an hour away. And so a lot of the things I treat now are people who were looking for something and it was an hour or two hours away from them. And so I'm very thankful to be able to provide it locally now. That's great. That's wonderful. And so for some of our listeners who are nurse practitioners and thinking about opening up their own practice, what were some of the barriers and hurdles that you had to overcome in opening up your practice? Um, I will say one of the biggest things is knowing the laws or the rules and the regulations. I feel like in nursing school, everyone's like, oh, ask your board, ask your board. And I'm going to tell you, like, they really don't give you any information. And I'm afraid to ask them because I don't want to put a target on my face. So I'm like, I almost don't even want to poke the bear. Um, but there's so much gray area. So it's just fear of, am I doing this correctly? No one's going to be able to tell you, you know, if you're right or wrong, it's more like, well, you do it and then hope you're right. And that the board will come and tell you if you're wrong. Um, but it's like figuring out all of that gray area um, is so hard. And so there are lots of groups that I'm in, um, Facebook groups and things like that, that really help guide me and give me information that I can't find on any state websites. I never learned in school and I'm still just kind of figuring out now. That's what I find in a lot of areas. I'm working with someone who's trying to open up a massage therapy school. And uh, talking to the board for massage therapy is much like talking to the nursing board. Yeah, there's no one answering the phone. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and that's a problem. And so uh, if you're starting out in business, knowing those things and knowing where to find the answers and who to ask and finding someone to support you is going to be critical for anything that you do. Who were the biggest supporters when you started your business? Um, well, my aunt had already done a lot of classes and research. So she kind of like just gave me all her stuff. So I'm a very big supporter of like just sharing information for free because I, I feel like there's so many people trying to make a dollar all the time. And I don't really see, you know, I don't have to make money off of you. You might not be successful or you might be, I don't know. So I'm just going to give you this information. Um, so that she's been a great support, but a lot of, um, you know, Facebook groups, pretty much any niche that you're interested in, there is at least one, if not many Facebook groups with a lot of other knowledgeable professionals in it. And so many like just general resources, like, oh, I'm looking for a phone company that I can, an app I can put on my phone, but it'll ring different. So I know it's my business phone. Mm -hmm. found that in there. I had, you know, I had looked in the past or just all kinds of different uh, protocols or just ideas to be shared. And so that's really where I lean to. If I have a question, I can post it in there. And a lot of times they're not judgmental. Um, and so just being able to reach out to other professionals like that has been the best thing I could ask for. Great. Wonderful. And so um, what's new on the horizon for you? What's next? Um, I really, I really can't wait to go full time into my clinic. I um, am teaching. I don't know how long I will do that. Um, but that's kind of my next goal is to get to a point where I feel like I can be full time. Um, I'm adding services. So I just added um, chemical pills and then lipo dissolve injections. I'm very excited to see results for those. So I've been adding some services and like I said, add, trying to add another day. And so that's really where I'm working now is just expanding that clinic to become more full-time. Okay. All right. And so um, where, where are you located and how can people find you? Yeah. So I'm actually moving like this weekend. <laughs> um, and so I am, I'm getting a place that's three times the size of where I'm at now. I'm right now I'm in like a 500 square foot little ducked off side building thing that no one can ever find. Um, but my new address is uh, 3413 North Briarwood Lane in Muncie. Um, it's actually right behind like IHOP and um, there's a lot of hotels over there in that area. Um, so it's a lot more marketable and has more visibility. So that's where I'll be moving and ne next week we'll be open over there. So that's the address I'm giving everyone. 
Um, and then I have a website, it is rejuvenatemuncie.com. So there's tons of information on there for pretty much all of the services and booking um, information about myself. Um, I was updating that today. So all the, uh, changing a business address is so complicated. So yes, I've been there. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there is that. And um, you can always, um, you can send inquiries on there. I'm on Facebook as well. So Rejuvenate Muncie is pretty much the at for any social media. I have Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, and so I'm on all of those as well. So you can reach me any of those places. Okay, great. And so let's kind of shift a little bit because some of our, our listeners are really struggling with finding places to market their services and to get uh, people eyes on them. Where and how do you market your services? The best actual marketing for me, and it might be because of how small or big Muncie is, is really word of mouth. So I've been at a lot of different events. Um, so that's been a great, great marketing source. Like I said, pretty much if I'm at something talking about the event, I get a lot of traffic on my website after that. I do also, I continuously run a Google ad. I get impressions from it. I'm not great at like understanding all the analytics to it, but I do run one of those consistently and it does seem to you know bring in traffic. Um, I do run Facebook ads and those have been a lot more successful lately. It's really figuring out how to target your audience. And once you kind of figure that out, um, you see a, a lot of traffic, but really getting people started and the word of mouth and like for me with weight loss, especially is my big one. They're like, wow, where are you losing all this weight? And so word of mouth has been great for um, my business. That's wonderful. That's great. I know there's a big market uh, right now for those types of services, uh, weight loss. I, I see the ads um, all the time and there's one particular ad and I don't know why this gentleman keeps coming up on my feed, but <laughs> there's this guy that's really ripped and everything and and I never actually stop on the ad other than I notice he's there and I'm like, oh, it's him again. So how do you get people to engage with your ads that you're putting out there? Um, a lot of stuff I've been posting lately is me. Um, so I try to, it's really hard for me to get more comfortable with that. I have my own uh, self-conscious thoughts and things, but I've been posting a lot more of myself. I did that kind of in the beginning too. So I posted my weight loss transformation. Recently I did, I was doing an injection on myself. So I posted that and that seems to, even if it's something like crazy, like, oh my gosh, doesn't that hurt? Or things like that seems to just really like have that attention grab on there. But outside of that, um, it's really just those figuring out what those keywords are, what are people looking for right now? Um, and then once I can get them on the site, then they can search around and look into everything. Okay, that sounds great. And so um, we're getting close to um, wrapping up, but I was curious, is there one piece of advice that you would give to a budding nurse entrepreneur who's wanting to get started, what would it be? My advice is always to just keep going. Um, this actually is not my first business attempt. Um, I have had an unsuccessful business attempt and I'm okay with that. Um, I'm glad that that ended. <laughs> um, and I just think if you just keep going, you're gonna have good days and bad days, but it's just like pushing through all of that. Um, even in nursing school, I mean, I have filled a class and I made it here. So, you know, that's not the end all be all if you don't let it be. So just pushing through those small challenging times and getting to the other side and being able to let that go, whether it was something you really wanted, it didn't work out, or if it's a bad test or anything like that, just keep going through that and don't let that hold you back. Well, that's something that we really need to pause for a moment and unpack that because so many times we have this idea of we're going to go in and go in business and be successful overnight because we see everybody's Facebook ads that says they can get, you know, $100,000 a month just on doing one social media post, you know, <laughs> they make it sound so easy. And so we don't meet that target or we have a failure or a setback. I myself had another uh, business prior to my current business and we just folded in 2020. We decided to go our separate ways. It was a partnership and we decided to fold. And um, when when it happened, I likened it to getting a divorce, right? I, was in my, I, I had to leave my work wives. There were two other women. So I had to leave my work wives and it was hard for us to negotiate that new role of just going back to being friends when we're so used to being business partners and things like that. But ultimately, 
it was a good thing because if that hadn't happened, this couldn't have happened. And I've had other uh, ventures where I've worked with startups and they didn't pan out. You know, they, they folded for, had nothing to do with me, but they folded. Uh, one was a genetics testing company and they partnered with this lab that does genetic testing and they were going to do allergy testing at home allergy testing you get your swab you don't have to get stuck with needles you do your uh testing a cheek swab and then me the nurse practitioner would go and help you uh interpret what your results were and things like that but unfortunately that business didn't continue because of regulatory hurdles that they did not properly get the information um, legally to do. And so they folded, but it was a great learning experience for me on how to work with a startup. And so I don't look at that as a negative experience. Do what I look at is it as a negative experience uh, with the business that we closed because at the time of the closing, yes, it was painful, but I also knew that it was time for a new chapter and um, it was time for us to do something different. We were going in different directions and that's okay. They were ready to retire and slow down and I was ready to go faster. <laughs> and you know, so you learn from those experiences. And I failed a class in grad school, oddly enough, in the very thing that I'm doing now in geriatrics. And there, there were reasons behind all of that. Um, and I failed by a little bit. It was a clinical issue, a long story, but basically it was a preceptor that we didn't mesh and get along. So yeah, that's why I failed because of her, <laughs> but, but it know. happens. I mean, I it just know. happens and yeah, it happens. yeah, it happens. Um, and, and I say this not, you know, I, I may not be everybody's cup of tea. You may not be everybody's cup of tea, but somebody likes us, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And so you have to have a certain amount of tough skin, as they say in business. And if you look at it in the scientific method, failure is part of the process. You don't fail. You just learn ways of not to do it. And, and that's what we had. We had to learn. You had to, to do that learning curve. And if here's the here's a here's a crazy thing if i hadn't failed that class i never would have met the person who's going to be my next preceptor who i went into business with and became friends with see there's a reason why things happen and so i think that we just need to be open uh, to what's going on and you gotta bounce back you can't just wallow in it and I, I want our listeners to hear that you can persevere and you've persevered and certainly have gone on and uh, come from being a CNA to an RN to a nurse practitioner, a business owner, a professor. So you've done a lot in a short period of time. So I'm going to say kudos to you. Thank you. Yeah, I, my hat goes off to you. <laughs> um, and I've tried the academia thing, you know. <laughs> I just It's not for me. So I went a different route and I opened up my own school so I didn't have to deal with it. <laughs> it's rough. It is definitely rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can get into all that whole politics with academia. Uh, the problem is, is that um, I was just talking to someone and she went back and got her PhD and all of this and nursing. And she said every time she got a new credential, she made less money because she went immediately back to starting salary. So she became a nurse practitioner, went back to starting salary, became a professor with a PhD, went back to starting salary. So each time she got more education, she actually got a pay cut. That yeah. is the crazy thing about nursing. Yeah. So entrepreneurship seems to be the way to go. Yeah, I, I'm I'm leaning hard into it. I'm enjoying it more than I thought I would, and I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing now. It sounds great. You know what? I never thought I was going to be an entrepreneur either. I thought I'd just go to work, do my thing, come home. I didn't even want to be in management. I ended up in management, realized I don't want to do that either. Um, Learn great skills while I was there but not to where I want to do that all the time and be on call 24 7 365 
that was insane. That's the reason I went into nursing, so I wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I had to figure out a different way. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the end of our show today. Again, I want to thank you, Dr. Carey, for being here. Uh, please look up at Rejuvenate Muncie. Uh, I, I look forward to uh, talking with you further and uh, getting to know you even more since you're just right down the street from me from good old Anderson. Uh, so I want to thank you for being here. This is the Nurse Shark Academy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Make a comment. Let us know how the show went. And also look at our YouTube channel. You can get our podcast at Podbean and other places where you get your podcast. I want to thank you for tuning in and see you next time. Wait, wait, don't go. There's a very important announcement from the Nurse Shark Academy. Look for the information at the Nurse Shark Academy biz. And thanks for tuning in to our podcast, the Nurse Shark Academy show. I just wanted to remind you that coming up on May 10th, and 11th during Nurses Week, we'll be having our Nurses for the Kingdom Challenge. This is Kingdom Principles for your nursing career, nursing showing up and showing out. That'll be May 10th and 11th at, from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Registration information will be following, so just put that on your calendar. Love to see you. Bye-bye for now.